Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at an all new release of Raspbian X called Raspbian X Nighthawk. Now you can go ahead and download this right now from Pi Labs YouTube channel. I'll leave a link for that video in the description. He's got three links to download from. So in this video, I'm going to go over some of my favorite features of this new Raspbian X release, and then I'm going to do an install tutorial. I'll be using a Windows 10 PC to install it to an SD card. Some people were struggling with the last release, so I figured I'd go ahead and get that out of the way also. And the very first thing you need to do when you install this is open up the README on the desktop and go ahead and read through this. He's got a lot of great information in here, and some of your questions might already be answered. First things first, this does not come overclocked. It works well on the Raspberry Pi 4, and it's recommended for the Pi 4, so I'm not even going to mention any other Raspberry Pis. I have overclocked my unit, and we're sitting at the on-demand governor, but I'm going to go ahead and change that. It's actually super easy to do. Go down to the little Windows icon in the bottom left-hand corner, and from the search bar, we're just going to type in performance. So I'll click on this. It's automatically going to change to my performance governor which is actually set at 2.1 gigahertz on the CPU and 700 megahertz on the GPU. It definitely seems a lot snappier with an overclock, but you can get by at the stock 1.5 gigahertz of the Raspberry Pi 4. One thing I'd like to mention is this has nothing to do with Windows whatsoever. It's just got a Windows 10 look to it. This is still Raspbian. It's a Linux distribution that's been highly modified for the Raspberry Pi 4. Lots of great applications are pre-installed. Down here, you can see we have some Office icons, but when we open them up, it's going to be LibreOffice, kind of like that little touch there. LibreOffice works great, and it's pre-installed with this image. So if we go down here to the little Windows icon, you can see we have a lot of stuff. Favorites, recently used, all, accessories, lots of great stuff in here that I'll personally use. But one of my favorites right now for this release is my Android. Now what this is going to allow us to do is mirror our Android device. I'm going to be using the Pixel 4 XL, and I've went into the developer settings and I've turned on USB debugging. I'm going to go ahead and plug in my phone now. I'm going to start up my Android. And there we have it. We now have my Android device mirrored. Unfortunately, this does not support sound right now. This is actually using the application called Screen Copier, S-C-R-C-P-Y. Works on Windows, Linux, or Mac. And as you can see here, we have it running on the Raspberry Pi 4. I can use my screen on my phone to navigate, or I can go ahead and use my mouse directly on my Raspberry Pi 4 to control my phone. I did set up a little game here. I just wanted to download something uh, fast just to show you that it works. Like I said, sound is not working right now, but it does work amazingly. Hopefully sound can be added down the road. And by the way, sound doesn't work with Windows or Mac either, so it's not going to work on the Pi 4. It's not a Pi 4 limitation, it's the software itself. Still, really cool software. You can have your Android device mirrored on screen while you're doing other work on the Raspberry Pi 4. That way you have all of your messages, you have access to your email and everything like that right on your big monitor. With this release, yes, we still have the Chromium Media Edition installed, so if we go to Internet right here, we can open up the Media Edition or the regular old Chromium web browser. If you're just browsing the web, definitely use the web browser. But if you want to watch Netflix or any DRM content, use the Media Edition. This will allow us to easily access Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime Video, Spotify, and tons of other streaming services that use DRM like Widevine. It's just really nice to have it. And without this, we could not watch Netflix on our Raspberry Pi. Dr. Charles Grobe, spelled G-R-O-B. So yeah, this is definitely loaded down with awesome applications. We even have Box 86, a few freeware games like another Metroid 2 remake, Cursed Castle, DOSBox, Minecraft Pi, Retro Pi is pre-installed. Emulation Station does seem a bit slow. I know there's a fix out there for it, but it hasn't been implemented in this. And personally, I don't think it's too slow to use, but you do notice a little bit of lag in the Emulation Station menu. Steam is also pre-installed, but it's very experimental. There are a few games that do work with Box86. You can download them directly in Steam. And in my last video on Raspbian X, I showed off a couple running. But keep in mind, it's super experimental right now. Box86. ZSNES is pre-installed and works great. And we also have a Windows 98 emulator.
and this is just something fun to mess around with. Windows 98 running on a Raspberry Pi 4 inside of Raspbian Nighthawk Edition. But yeah, if you're interested in installing this, I'm going to show you how to do it. It's really simple to do. It's just like flashing any other image, but I had a few people ask about the last release of Raspbian X, so I figured I'd go ahead and do a tutorial on this. Lots of great applications pre-installed. It's still Linux. This is not Windows. And if you need anything else, you can just install it from Terminal. So we're going to be installing this to our SD card for a Raspberry Pi 4 using a Windows PC. You can also do this on Linux or Mac. The application we're going to use to flash the image to the SD card is compatible with those two operating systems. So if you're ready to get this installed for your Pi 4, let's move over to my other PC now. All right, so let's go ahead and get this installed. First things first, we need to download the image. Link for this is in the description. We're going to head over to this video. There are three mirrors. I'm just going to grab the first one here download. It's 3.2 gigabytes. It's going to expand when we flash it. While that's downloading, let's go ahead and grab the application we're going to use to flash this to our SD card, and that's going to be Etcher. Like I mentioned, this works on Mac, Linux, and Windows. I'm going to grab the portable version for Windows. And finally, if you'd like to overclock, I'm going to provide that information also, but I do recommend using Notepad++ if you're using a Windows machine. We do have to edit a config.txt file and I recommend using this instead of the built-in notepad editor. So we'll go ahead and download this. I'm gonna grab the installer. We're still working on those other two downloads, but as soon as all this is finished, I'm gonna place it on my desktop for easy access. Okay, so I have everything downloaded. We have Etcher, we have the Raspbian X Nighthawk image, Notepad++ in case you wanna do an overclock, and I'm also gonna leave another link in the description for a little overclock. There's a couple profiles in here, and we'll go over that after we flash the image. This is just in case you wanna overclock. We're going to start up Etcher. Now this will work on a 16 gigabyte micro SD card, but I'm using a 32 gigabyte. So we're going to go ahead and flash from file. From here, we're going to navigate to where we place the Nighthawk image. Mine's on my desktop, Raspbian X, Nighthawk. Double click. It's going to load that up. Next, we need to select our target. The target is going to be our micro SD card. I have a few drives connected to this. You need to be very careful. Make sure you choose your micro SD card. It won't show your internals. And finally, we're going to flash. This is going to flash the Raspbian X Nighthawk image to our micro SD card so we can run it on our Raspberry Pi. Let this finish up. It really depends on how fast your micro SD card is. Okay, so our flash is now finished. And you're actually done here. You can move over to your Raspberry Pi 4 now, plug in the SD card, HDMI, and power. But if you want to do an overclock, let's go ahead and get that out of the way. Like I mentioned, I recommend using Notepad++. We're going to install it real quick. Very simple process. Now when we right-click on a text file, it'll be in our context menu. I don't want to run it. I'm going to finish. I have this file linked in the description. We have an overclock of 1750 megahertz or 1.75 gigahertz, an overclock of 2 gigahertz, and a max overclock of 2.147 and 750 on the GPU. Now with any of these overclocks, I do recommend sufficient cooling for your Raspberry Pi. I personally always go with the max here and I'm using the ice tower cooler with my Raspberry Pi 4. I'm going to snap this over to the left hand side. This is the text file that contains our overclocks. And now I'm going to open up a file explorer window and I'm going to find my partition called boot. It's right here. This is my micro SD card with Raspbian X on it. There is a file inside of here called config. It's a text document. We're going to right click and we're going to edit with notepad plus plus. I'm going to snap this over to the right hand side and at the very bottom, right under V3D, we're going to paste one of these in. It really depends on how high you want to overclock. I'm going to go with the max here, 2.147 gigahertz on the CPU and 750 megahertz on the GPU. Remember, you need cooling for any of these. Copy, paste, file, save, and we're going to close it down. So now when we put this in our Raspberry Pi, we'll have an overclock. So here we are. Got my HDMI plugged in, got my power, gonna plug in this freshly flashed SD card, and like I mentioned, I'm using a Raspberry Pi 4 with that ice tower cooler. I did run that overclock. 
The first boot will take a lot longer than any other time you boot it up because it needs to get some files ready and it has to expand the file system on that SD card, so just be patient. As long as the green status LED on your Raspberry Pi is flashing, you know that it's working. Okay, so we're now up and running. The default password is Raspberry. Like I mentioned, on the desktop, there's a readme file. It'll tell you how to change that password. It'll also tell you how to change the root password, and I do recommend doing that. Because anybody on your network right now with that stock password can log into this, so you just want to make it a little more secure. Readme's right here. All the information you need to know about Raspbian X Nighthawk is in this readme file. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. I really appreciate you watching and hope you try out Raspbian X Nighthawk Edition. It's an awesome modified Raspbian distro, super clean, and it's very stable. I personally really like using this. If you have any questions, I think your best bet would to be join Pi Labs Discord or ask him in his YouTube comments. But all links for everything mentioned in this video are in the description. And I'd like to give a big shout out to Pi Labs once again and Grayduck for doing a lot of the different modifications and adding different applications to this version. So thank you for that. But like always, thanks for watching.